Okay, well, thanks ever so much for um, coming to see me in the in the graveyard shift. Um, I'm Anna Richardson, and I'm um, one of the senior leaders at Sir Thomas Watton Academy, uh, and we're part of a large trust that you can see there on the front is part of the Mockby Learning Trust. Um, we're based at a school in Doncaster. It's got quite high levels of deprivation. And I think when we're in this, this session this morning, some of the messages and the ideas that were coming through were, were just felt really pertinent to our setting and, um, and, and the deprivation and challenges that many of our students um, face. And I think just really give a real purpose for what we're doing today and why building a reflective school culture is so important. So um, I'd just like you to consider these really high level um, questions. And if you open your booklet, you've just got those, those uh, sort of dichotomous uh, preferences, which image summarizes how you like to holiday. Do you prefer to kind of get out there, explore, or do you prefer to just chill out wherever you are? Just circle whichever one it is, just, just go for it as a go. I'm asking you to make a dichotomous decision here. I know it's sometimes more um, confusing than that or, 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 or more complicated than that. Then how do these images of live and kicking, the Spice Girls, the Troll Collection, mine had little gems in their belly buttons, um, <laughs> Will Smith <laughs> and uh, the American Adventure Theme Park. If you're from up north, you'll definitely know what that is. If you're not from outside of Yorkshire, you're probably not very close. Um, does it make you feel nostalgic? Does it make you feel totally indifferent? And then finally, which one would you enjoy more, a Sunday roast or a great good curry? Um, just make a, just a really quick decision on each of those. And now this is the bit that you're going to hate before and you're going to wish that you'd gone to another one. I want you to find someone, if you can, and it might be difficult, it's got an exact match. All right, I'm just going to give you a minute to do it. Try and find someone. Have, can you find someone that's got an exact match? <laughs> I did the same. <laughs> that's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know about the... Yeah. This one there. Yeah. I can say yeah. well, I'm, 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 I'm that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that one. I think I'm that, that goes with that. Adventure, <laughs> um, <laughs> indifferent, <laughs> and... You got so close to um, nostalgic. So, uh, Otherwise, we're the same. No, <laughs> so the activity holiday. Yeah. The no, activity park. <laughs> the the middle, yeah, yeah, no. And then the roast. Yeah, oh, I'll go on in. Well, we'll <laughs> so you like oh, that? Right. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. So you might be wondering what uh, you know, reminiscing on your troll collection necessarily has to do with creating a reflective school culture. Well, Daniel Coyle, in his 2018 uh, book, The Culture Code, suggested that creating connections, just like, I suppose, the superficial ones that we just sort of tried to create there, um, really helped to forge a culture that's grounded in safety. And in The Culture Code, Coyle suggests that safety is one of the three grounding principles uh, for creating a strong school culture. And that's safety, vulnerability and purpose. So I'd like you to just consider, actually, before we move on to looking at the groups, why is safety a key ingredient to building a reflective school culture? And also, why is it important to create connections? Why do connections help to build safety? So you've got those questions just on page um, two of your booklet. I'm just going to give you 30 seconds for each question. You might just want to jot down some ideas about that. Why is it that connections help to create safety? And why is safety important for a culture? Just one minute, 30 seconds on each question. It's fair to give me your ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just do a little bit of feedback if that's all right. So why do we think that connections are firstly important for creating a sense of safety? Anyone want to share any of their ideas? I've just popped, I've just popped down sort of um, shared experiences. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, that, that relatability, that shared understanding between you feel like you've got a connection with someone, yeah, you do feel safer. Anything else? Anything else that anyone else was thinking? Honesty. 
and then gain honesty out of them if you feel safe then you will yeah and and if you feel that you've got that that connection where you can be honest yeah then you're going to be much more safe yeah absolutely and why is safety important then in a culture why is that one of the the, the grounding principles that Kyle flags up in 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 his book why do we think that safety is so key yeah absolutely anything else Trust for safety, absolutely. And if people so, and if people feel safe, then they're going to buy into that that sense of what what you're working towards and what 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 your common purpose is. And I suppose that's where it comes together. Sorry, I have a thought just to say quickly yeah. about sort of um, you keep story because culture has, has got a root in something and it just keeps that story of why reflective practice is important. Yeah, that shared narrative, isn't it, as well? Absolutely. Um, so to bring Iris kind of into this, and this is just quite, a, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a school leader and living and breathing it every day, so I'm hoping that you might be able to take some practical aspects around it, around how we use groups in our academy to be able to create those connections and, um, and to be able to create safety. So in a quite obvious one would be sort of career stage connections you know your ECT group together your ITT group together perhaps a more experienced uh, teacher group together so that colleagues experiencing similar barriers or issues can work together um, and have conversations that are really pertinent to them where they're at in their career We've also got subject specific connections so that colleagues with particular expertise can really give feedback to each other around uh, particular areas of the curriculum and they've got much more depth with it because they're, they're subject specific. With any teaching learning priority that I have, I always set up a group for it. So I'll get a group of teachers together. I'll go, oh, OK, I really want us to drive this through the school, this particular strategy. I was talking to someone about our pre-reading strategies that we've been working on this year. Um, can you can you film me like a couple of clips of you using these strategies so that people know what it looks like? Then we'll share it in a full class, at a full school launch. And then the rest of the school will then contribute to that group as we embed and implement that strategy. So using for every single teaching and learning strategy that we drive through the school, we've got a group. And really that shows the sort of um, the, the way in which that that, that technique grows and in the way in which it um, is sh shaped in each area. We also have culture and climate um, climate connections. So this often comes from our pastoral team who might go, hang on a minute, this cohort of students are really struggling um, with this particular subject or they're, they're struggling to thrive in this area, but actually they're doing really well over here. So um, the pastoral team will work with our teaching team and say, can you just get me some really good practice of this particular cohort? Because I want to be able to share it with other colleagues who are struggling a little bit to get the best out of them. So using our pastoral team to drive those reflections and that also works from a same point of view using our TAs to sort of um, look at our best practice and then share that across and that really works to connect colleagues from across the school who might come together and go oh my goodness 82 what can we do about them and just sharing that, that good practice so creating those connections and what I'd like you to just consider now is if you're already using Iris how are you using it to create connections in a really meaningful way um, can you make any of those connections even more meaningful just from some of the suggestions that I've just made? So I'll just give you, what, like 30 seconds to maybe sort of reflect on that um, just before we move on. Don't, don't want to sort of push you through it too, too fast. <laughs> Are there any reflections there that anyone kind of wanted to share? And you think, oh, actually, yeah, I could really do with setting up a group like that. That, that would work well. Or we do this and this works really well in terms of grouping colleagues together and getting them to connect where they might not usually. I think certainly across sites. So like, especially with like your trust, sharing with other schools and seeing how they do things is a nice connection, I think. And yeah, the collaboration yeah. with others. Definitely, yeah. Okay, okay. So... 
Kyle doesn't just suggest uh, sort of creating connections. Um, I don't think he even does up there. Um, but here are a range of different ways in which um, Kyle suggests that we can create safety. So there are quite a few, and I just kind of thought um, you could use those prompt questions, those four prompt questions, to just consider how maybe some of those strategies might be translated into your setting in order to create a sense of safety that you can then use to garner really uh, reflective school culture and, and, and yeah, organisational culture culture. So I will just give you two minutes. There's four questions there uh, for you to consider in terms of what you already do, that you do really well, what do you not do, that maybe you could start doing, what do you do, but maybe you could perhaps improve at it, and then what do you think, nah, that ain't for me. <laughs> just two minutes. <laughs> okay, shall we do a little bit of feedback in terms of anything that maybe you think, yep, we're all over that. We really do create safety really effectively using that particular strategy. Is there something on there that really resonated with you in your setting? Share your point. Yeah, no, I was just saying, um, our head teachers very much for taking risks. It's a really uh, supportive environment that we've got, walking kindness, and you know, you try something and it goes terribly, and that's not, uh, you know, if you're not criticised for it, it's well, plans on everything that go, what can we learn from it? So it's that walking kindness. Yeah, absolutely. And then anything that anyone kind of thought, yeah, do you know what? That yeah, that is something that we we could really have a go at doing a little bit more. I think it's about sharing the vulnerability. So, like, if I've recorded some training that I wasn't too sure on, sometimes I'm hesitant to share that with colleagues. So that's obviously just self progression, isn't it? And like just yeah, trying to push yourself past that point of feeling vulnerable about stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I I had a really difficult um, year ten class that were quite sort of notorious across the the, the academy, and I I was really worried about sharing my reflections with them because they weren't like perfect at all. But actually, that really empowered lots of other colleagues to be able to kind of go, all right, then yeah, Anna's having a really tough time with them as well. These are things that she's trying. Yeah, they're the things that aren't working. And I think yeah, that that really does help to build build that safety and, um, and vulnerability as well. Yeah, like you say. So. We're talking about a reflective culture, and for me, reflecting isn't just about looking back, but it's about having a sense of looking forward and looking for what you're aiming for and what your purpose is. And so we're going to have a bit of a go at um, using the five whys method. And you might have done this before. If you have done it before, I kind of find every time I do it, I come up with something slightly different. Um, so hopefully, like even if you have done it before, it might kind of um, you might get something a little bit different from it. So it starts um, with a brief description of what it is that you feel your role is okay and that can you can either take it down a professional route or a personal route now I've taken it down a professional route I teach geography there we go a sentence so I would like you now just at the top of page is it four yeah, yeah. yep to write just a sentence that just summarizes your role either professional or personal personal whatever it is that you want to explore today we're going to try and get to the bottom of like kind of your purpose what's the point in what you, what it is that you're doing okay 
Okay. Now we're going to take that particular sentence and we're going to ask ourselves, why is that important? Okay, so for example, I teach geography because I want to pass on my passion. Why is that important? Well, because I want to expose students to those spectacular natural landscapes. Why else? Well, because I want them to understand um, natural resourcing and energy production. So I've asked myself why about that particular st um, statement three times. I'd like you to do that now and write your statements right at the top of those three boxes. So why is this important? And your next task, with each of those three statements, you're going to ask yourself, why is this important? Five times. So, for example, I teach geography. Why is that important? Well, because I want to pass on my passion for geography. Why is that important? Well, I want students to understand the importance of sustainability and how they need to really look after the planet. Well, why is that important? Well, if they understand how to look after the planet, then they could maybe understand their impact and the potential that that, that can have. Well, why is that important? Well, I want them to learn how to live in harmony with nature and not to create unnecessary damage. Well, why is that important? Well, because I want them to understand how human impact can be minimised. Let's take my next one. I want to expose them to natural landscapes. Well, why do I want to do that? Well, I want to get that awe and wonder for the natural world. Why is that important? Well, I want to en enable that fulfilment that they can get from the natural world. Why is that important? I want to create that lifelong love of maintaining it. If they love it, then they're going to want to maintain it for future generations. Why is that important? Well, if they're going to want to maintain it, then they can understand how human impact can be minimised. And so on. <laughs> so you might not have time to go through all of them. I'm just going to give you I'm, I'm going to give you three minutes. If you can take one of your streams and just see it through as many times as you can in for five. Why is it important? Why is it important? And we're really trying to dig down to what our core purpose is. Yeah. It's 
like you, I never really think about like why I do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's it's strange to like actually think about it. Yeah, it's just very uh, stimulating. And, um, yeah, lots of questions out, I think. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. I think um, in this format, so probably the, once I've scribbled everything, this will be my end stuff. So. <laughs> okay we've had about three minutes there so um obviously if you want to continue this at home feel free <laughs> um but hopefully in much the same way as um as, as mine did you might kind of find that you kind of come down to similar sort of reoccurring themes and ideas around Essentially, we just need to, you know, look after the earth and, 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 and take care of it. And that was kind of wh where I kept getting to. And you might find that you kind of kept getting to the same. And that, for me, is that fundamental purpose. Um, and that's where the, the sort of the, the place at the bottom is for, for, for you. That thing, that what is that really key driving force? What is the main point? Now, I, I noticed, uh, Josh, you got straight to yours. What, 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 what was it? So I sort of said, like, you know, one of my roles is to be in charge of professional development. I guess it's to improve the quality of teaching and learning by investing in CPD opportunities for all staff to have a positive impact on pupil outcomes. Yeah, so it's like that knock-on effect, isn't it, with professional learning? Absolutely. So uh, if you've not already done it or if you want to kind of just refine it, uh, maybe just give you like 30 seconds, just, just kind of maybe jot down a few ideas or themes or reoccurring points that came through for you is your fundamentals, your fundamental purpose. And we'll take a look a little bit more around how we can use our fundamental purpose to really drive change and create a, a sense of a culture. I know I'd be unrealistic to suggest that we can all make time to sit down and go through the five whys with every member of staff that we're working with. But if there is an opportunity in, um, in, in your professional development calendar to be able to come together either as a department or as a wider school team to look at your purpose and how everybody's fundamentals really sort of connect and when we did this as an academy it was really powerful in all of us coming together and, and having that I suppose you take it for granted oh yeah we're all here for the kids but actually working it through and really getting to well I, I really care about this particular aspect and this really matters to me and actually it really galvanizes uh, what you're doing and why you're doing it and in the busy day-to-day -day, that often gets lost and I think whenever you're trying to use iris and when you're trying to get colleagues to reflect on, the, on themselves and to have the time to go back through the clips and, ref and, and clip them down having that core purpose at the, at the real key and heart of it and driving that through I think is really important and sometimes it just it maybe just adds that additional purpose that perhaps gets that buy-in a little bit more um, to, to support your colleagues with reflecting. So there's um, other ways in which Iris can obviously create and maintain a sense of purpose. So on the other side, and I've just missed out that activity on the um, on the think about the trees that you'll plant or something like that, whatever it is. Um, so on the other side, you've got a range of different um, purpose, ways in which you can establish purpose. I'd like you to just consider the ways in which Iris Connect can be used to establish a sense of purpose in your culture um, and in your organisation. How can and using iris really helps to maintain and create a sense of purpose um, you might just want to circle in or, or or star them anything you think yeah using iris would really help with that there's no right or wrongs here <laughs>
want, want to share one of the um, strategies that Carl suggests that we can sort of use Iris to be able to establish a sense of purpose? Jenny, you can regret introducing yourself to me because I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, the naming the strategies that support our priorities, I think it's really important to be very, like we, uh, many of the others have also talked about the same thing. It's always be very directed with what you want to achieve. Yeah, yeah. What you're doing, why you're doing it, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Anyone else? Any others? Uh, creating and sharing visible artifacts to tell the story. Yeah. Why? 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 Like, how can Iris? I think, like, we've created lots of stuff that can be shared and accessible and applicable as well. So I think it's really important just to have a base and platform where it is to be accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I suppose the story is that you have that progress, isn't it? You know, colleagues can look back and see their own story with each um, strategy that we've implemented. Yeah, you see the story of how it's implemented and how it's grown and how it's developed. Yeah. Honestly, when I'm reading through them, I'm like, yeah, all of them. Yeah, <laughs> Language, yeah. I guess, is... Yeah. Pre pre precisely, yeah. And when I went through, I sort of picked out maybe like about five or six of the most pertinent, but I do feel like all, all of them absolutely can be, yeah, indeed. Um, so... Finally, I wanted to just come to looking at vulnerability. Um, and I, I feel I've come to that last because I kind of feel like we, we, get, we get to that vulnerability when we've got a really clear purpose and we've got that safety that allows colleagues to be able to buy in. And at Sir Thomas Wharton Academy, we try, at least, to share our vulnerability through a collective buy-in. And um, so we use Iris and at all different points um, across the academy to be able to communicate and come together and collaborate. And to just sort of give you a few examples of that. So every week at briefing, we use Iris. So Matt, our head teacher, who was one of the sort of first people, he, he likes to tell people, I used to be young once, I used to wear a cardigan, I used to be a history teacher, and I used to be on Iris. And like, all right then, Matt. Um, <laughs> and, but when he came to our academy as principal, I think his pull quote is on the front there. He wouldn't lead at an academy or it's on the back. Or he wouldn't lead any academy without Iris um, and you know so when Matt came into the academy he brought Iris in and he has brief he has Iris at briefing every single week and that's him as the principal of the school role modeling this is really important uh, this is this is a mode that I want to use that I'm role modeling that I think that, 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 we, that we should all be, be using it so I think that in itself just the fact that Matt showcase and using it at every professional development uh, we we use Iris and we use it also not just to sort of use it to disseminate it further but also to reflect so we do go back we pair up members of SLT especially on inset days to go back and watch each other's sessions and to give each other that feedback teachers seeing that is really powerful because it's not just for teachers or it's not just for ECTs or it's not just to record the bad classes it's actually to record everybody at all different points um, our wonderful receptionists have been using it um, because they have a really manic hour half hour hour after school um, and they get pulled in every which direction so they set Iris up to look at how can they be more efficient in that use of time um, so sharing those vulnerabilities wholesale whole school it becomes a part of how you do things and i think it was in one of the sessions um earlier where it says it's the way we do things around here and that that to me is just that is culture isn't it it's the way we do things around here it's the way we talk it's the way we operate and for us iris is at the very heart of that because it's something that all of us are buying into and all of us are using it's not just for teachers it's for all of us and that with iris as well being connective and reflective that is, for me, how we've created that reflective school culture. Iris has been at the very heart of that. So just as a final activity, before um, I show you the little cheesy clip that goes along with our, um, with our glossy, I'd just like you to have a go at sort of ranking the, uh, the vulnerability um, strategies. Which strategy do you think? Yeah, I think that is probably the most effective way to share vulnerability. Um, which do you think is probably the least effective? Just sort of ranking those out if you can. It might be worth just numbering them so you don't have to obviously write them out. Just so it would be an interesting way to maybe reflect on that.
aware of the time so um and i do desperately want to show you the video because it's just super cute um so um can anyone maybe share with me the thing that they put in that top box they felt yep that i feel that's a really effective way of sharing vulnerability and i think that's most yeah most effective i put the debrief situations and build a shared mental model for future situations so I know obviously they're all important, but I think to sit with someone and go through exactly what happened and say, this is how we could change up, you know, for future, I think that's a really nice way to do it and not be too, like, head on about what went wrong and stuff. It's more, it's pretty much cooperative, which is one of the others anyway, but yeah, just, yeah, I thought that was a good one. Yeah, so I think sort of our little chit chat, um, I think um, certainly sort of sharing any negatives. Uh, in person, face to face, and uh, I think you know it's not just what we're saying or the information that we have to share, or it could be disciplinary. It's not just the employment role; it's the body language as well. So, and I think uh, although it is the job, um, I think the recipient would, would rather sort of um, it doesn't have to be a, a disciplinary; it could be something else, you know, a, a, a practice that didn't work so well in the classroom. But I think it's just that fact that I think there's still hope. And sort of, there should be some sort of, um, a sort of, um, it's it's not really a fault finding thing. It's sharing the negative, and then there should be some example of sort of, well, what's the corrective action? What's the hope in the situation? Rather than an email or a, or, you know, a text mm. message or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because so, it doesn't yeah. create that positive and supportive <laughs> yeah, environment, yeah, does it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is there anything else that anyone wanted to share? Okay, I'll um, I'll show you the video, and then if you've got any questions, um, then I think we might have maybe a minute um, to um, to discuss those at the end. There's a lot. Um, I wouldn't use it in the academy without Iris Connect. It, it just supports everything that, that I want to do as a leader. It is it's a non-negotiable for me. I think emphasising the real sort of the privacy um, of the platform and the, the power that colleagues had over their own reflections. I think that was that was really vital to ensuring that colleagues understood the very premise of what it was all about about putting them in control. I have used Alice Connect since I was in in ECT, uh, which is about four years ago now. And it's been really amazing actually because I've been able to watch myself develop from not only over like a couple of months but over, over a few years. And it's been essential to my teaching practice. I haven't been teaching without Irish really. If I'm maybe struggling with a certain group, um, I'm then able to go on and nine times out of ten, one of the other TAs is video themselves in the same class, which then I'm able to watch and uh, view the strategies that they use that work in the class with those children. So we use Iris at, at all levels, not just uh, teachers or early career teachers, um, but leaders and very experienced teachers, because we want those, those really experienced teachers to be able to capture the best practice, to be able to share how it's done um, you know, at the very best level, but also everybody 
doesn't matter what level you're at, there's always something that can be improved or something that can be refined. Just very subtle to it, I think it's a really beneficial tool that if you have got the opportunity to use it, absolutely take advantage of it. I refer to sort of after using it and, and getting coached from it, it's the same in teaching. Um, you know, you want to improve, why, why would you not want to improve? So, getting that feedback is really powerful. So. Yeah, so I thought it was cute. <laughs> has, has anyone got any, um, any questions? <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it.